Yes, I am live. Wow. Okay. Hmm. It's already night time. I just have to do this. Good. Good evening, everyone. This is Mark here. And um, when you put your hand on the plow, when you put your hand on the plow, when you put your hand on the plow, you can you joke, you can you take it seriously. But what is for certain is that it is not going to be pen chocolate. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. Um, I'm doing a book review of this book by Gary Chapman. God speaks your love languages. God speaks your love languages because Gary Chapman wrote about um, love languages, right? and um, that book was a bestseller. Oh my goodness, it's helped save several marriages and relationships. And The way you relate with God is definitely not the way I relate with God or mustn't be the same way, right? Some people like words of affirmation. That's what I looked at yesterday. So they like to talk. I love words too, right? I write a lot and all of that, but that's not my primary love language. So if you come on your love, bumping me and talking, 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 I will look at you like that. I need to see some action. For some other people so um quality time is quality time right when you spend time with someone not just uh, passing up and down but no you sit down you know and you spend 15 minutes 20 minutes one hour quality not not quantity it doesn't mean you have to spend the whole day but let it be time that is dedicated to this person you can even be there quiet but it has to be quality the person has to feel like we are really in this together. It can also be virtually, you know, especially since COVID, people don't go around anymore that much. But like me, that's my primary love language. So if I go out of my way to come visit you, with my God, and so, yes, God speaks that love language. That is why, frankly speaking, the best times in my relationship with God is when I am alone, quiet there in my corner, in my sacred space or my serene space. Early in the morning, I'm, I'm an early bed. So, 3.30, 3 a.m. <laughs> Last night was even 2.15 a.m. 4 a.m., 5 a.m., I'm there with my stack of books, talking like I'm talking to my friend, sometimes only in my head. I read something, I'm like, what do you think about this? I tell him all the things I'm looking forward to, like when I was looking for my purpose, I wanted to know my purpose. I want to know my purpose. I want to know my purpose. If you don't tell me my purpose, you're not my friend again. Until I had my purpose. Only there in that place, not like somebody told me that God said that. Uh -uh. And I didn't see it in the Bible because... Uh, uh, everything cannot be in the Bible now. Even it is written there in the Bible that not everything that happened was recorded in the Bible. So you need that time. And that is why in Mark 1 35, and that's the corner verse for my morning glory moments, which I do, we see how Jesus rose up early in the morning when places were still dark and went to a quiet place to pray. We were not told what he prayed or the words he used. So we cannot say, oh, well, the, um, there were words of affirmation and stuff, but that was quality time he was spending with his father. It's not like he doesn't know that he is with God, but um, he loved that. And that was not only early in that morning, and it was not a one-time thing. He would do that often.
can put their hands up in the air and go to church because what well, that's some people might want to spend quality time quality time with god in church some people might want to spend quality time in their quiet places some people might want to spend quality time on a mountain some people might want to spend quality time in israel or in jerusalem or is it the same place okay well something like that right so he says that um somebody he starts this chapter by saying somebody was um talking to him about um what moved them it was a lady what moved them during one of his conferences on love languages she realized that she and her husband had drifted apart because he loved you know expressions and noise and all of those things but she loved quiet time and so he would go to church and intimate relationship with God and she would receive a lot of things from God and she would write it down and she'll be wondering why her husband has to go out and feel like he has to belong to this small group and So, it was after attending a, a love language conference that she went back home and she bought the book and she gave it to her husband. And when they read the book, they realized, oh my goodness. So, this is what we've not been doing right. And in making that realization, they also realized that, hey, God relates with each of us in a different way. And so, they stopped trying to change the other person's way of relating with God. Then they gradually came to find a common ground. She would go with him sometimes and sit quiet and he would not insist that she goes for the altar call or she does this. Or... Not everybody is comfortable with that and that's not their love language. That's okay. And she too, she would not insist for him like, can you not sit quiet? Must you stand? Must you jump? Must you, must you put your hands on? Must people put their hands on you? Must you sit and make noise? Did not attempt to make his ministry as broad as possible, but rather as deep as possible. So that is uh, um, quality time. Even Jesus loved that. Look, like his interaction with the woman at the well. That was spending quality time with her. Was he obliged to? And other interactions. When he with Mary Magdalene, and he chose twelve people. He could choose were there not multitudes following him. It was about quality. Do not feel bad about it. Do not think oh, there's something wrong with me because I don't like to go, you know, to go and join the prayer warriors in church and pray and and then um, sing all the songs join the choir not everybody wants to join the choir for example i once went to a church there was a time when i i, I, I called myself a spiritual or a religious prostitute i would go to church after church church after church church after church after church and one time i was sitting down trying to focus like trying to listen to God, to, I wanted God to tell me something, although I was in a church. And then a water came and showed me like that.
in which stage somebody is when they come into church for example so you cannot force them to stand up to clap to sing to shout and sometimes that if the, the, the loudest is the best that is not possible that's not good maybe that's why some people don't go me frankly speaking i'm like nah this is not my season anyway so it doesn't mean that i don't like spending quality time with god but no right now going into a place of worship out there is not my season and i understand that but god and i are like this very close now more than ever so don't be chastising people and forcing people to go to church to stand up when they're standing up to kneel down to shout to put their hands up to do all of that Um, says that when someone's primary language is quality time or interrupted time of communion with God are not difficult but joyous and not burdensome but there are other people who cannot sit still I, I remember when I went to Ghana <laughs> I was telling my uh, cohorts that I need to sleep early because I wake up at 3 a.m. And some of them put their hands on their head. You, what do you do when you wake up at 3 a.m.? I told them, well, I spent time with God. And they were like, from 3 a.m. to what time? I said, from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Two hours? I said, yeah, two hours, sometimes two and a half. That's not possible. I can't. we have to stop we just have to stop anyway each person has to figure themselves out right so i like reading out his questions for reflection and discussion hoping that they also motivate you to go get the book i think it's on the amazon although it was a gift and i'm just so grateful and happy that she's actually reading the reviews i'm sharing you know i read a lot so people sometimes is do you know anyone whom you would um, guess has the primary love language of quality time what makes you say so and I answered me So, um, contrast your spiritual experience with that of someone else you know quite well. Can you see how a difference in primary love language